First, the probable cause of AIDS has been found. A variant of a known human cancer virus. Second, not only has the agent been identified, but a new process has been developed to mass produce this virus. Thirdly, with discovery of both the virus and this new process, we now have a blood test for AIDS. With the blood test, we can identify AIDS victims with essentially 100% certainty. If you're wondering about Margaret Heckler's 100% certainty and to understand the FDA approval of HIV antibody tests, you can Google donor screening assays for infectious agents and HIV diagnostic assays. This will take you to the FDA page listing antibody tests for hepatitis C, HIV, and others. Click on each HIV antibody test kit and review the intended use or the limitations of the tests. Millions of people take tests that are referred to as HIV tests. However, the idea that there is a laboratory test that can determine whether or not a person is infected with the virus is simply an illusion. The FDA has never approved a test kit that claims to be used uh, for the purpose of diagnosing HIV infection. Nobody can find free infectious HIV virus in a human being. That is why they have to resort to looking for antibodies to HIV in a person. That is one of the biggest flaws in the HIV hypothesis, that antibodies, which are a sign of immunity, you should be happy that you have antibodies. It means that you are now immune. And yet with, with AIDS, we have antibodies as a predictor or an indicator of AIDS and future death. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't recommend people ever getting tested. Uh, the reason is, I don't know what the tests mean, and I think no one else knows what the tests mean. I've never seen any evidence that what these tests purport to show, they're actually showing, namely the presence of a virus, the presence of an exogenous virus. I really would like to see the electron microscopic data of this, and apparently there is none. There is none where you've done a rigorous isolation protocol. The HIV antibody test is a very bad test. I believe that it is one of the worst frauds committed on the American public in the century. Well, just about everybody believes that if you get one of these tests, it will actually tell you whether or not you are infected with HIV. And if it's positive, that that's some kind of a prediction of whether or not you'll get AIDS. And that is absolutely not true. First of all, a positive result on that test doesn't mean that you're infected with HIV and there is no way that it can mean that. There's a basic scientific principle that most people are totally ignoring and right now I'm talking about the scientists and the doctors who are advocating these tests. The people that say these tests are 100% accurate. I would say more that they're 0% accurate. And the reason for that is, is this test con contains what you call antigens. They are proteins from the HIV, the virus. And the principle of it is, is that the HIV proteins in the test kit are supposed to react with any kind of HIV antibodies that may be present in the person's blood sample. So the HIV antigens would react with the HIV antibodies. And theoretically, only HIV antibodies react with HIV antigens. Now in reality, what really happens with antigens and antibodies is that they're not uh, exclusive with each other. They're more promiscuous. In other words, antibodies will react with antigens that they don't belong to. In other words, let's say I have tuberculosis and I have antibodies to, to the tuberculosis organism in my body and I go out and take an HIV antibody test what might happen is that my tuberculosis antibodies will cross-react with the antigens to HIV in the test kit, thereby giving a false positive. And these kind of cross-reactions are very, very common and very, very predictable. It's nearly impossible to determine the rate of false positives because there is no gold standard to independently verify test results. People with non-AIDS diseases have antibodies that can register a positive result on the HIV antibody test. Indeed, people with multiple sclerosis, T-cell lymphoma, 
generalized warts, and other diseases had the P24 antigen. And we also know that AIDS patients, despite being immune deficient, have lots of antibodies, more antibodies than, than healthy people. And many of these antibodies react with cellular proteins. That's just data that's widely available and, and not disputed. And we also know, or we, or we can bet, that AIDS patients also contain other infectious agents, such as other viruses, because we all know that if someone gets needle stuck from an AIDS patient, it's not just HIV that people are worrying about catching. You're more likely to, to, to develop antibodies to hepatitis B virus than HIV, 30 times more likely. So we can bet that the proteins from, these, from, from other viruses uh, will be present in the cultures as well. I don't know if anybody really knows what the viral load test is finding, but if you're infected with other different viruses, for instance, if you're sick with a cold or the flu or hepatitis or anything, you shouldn't get an HIV viral load test because it's bound to be really high. Now that doesn't seem to make any sense. If what you're measuring is HIV, then why would being sick with something else cause your HIV viral load to go up? In Africa, all you need is two of these bands to be positive. In Australia, you need four. If you were tested in New York today, then flew to Australia, and you had three bands in New York, you would not be positive in Australia, but you would be positive in New York City. Now, I mean, a virus cannot behave in this manner. they have to resort to looking for antibodies. They have to resort to looking for antibodies. psychological terror. That antibodies, which are a sign of immunity, psychological terror. Unless what they're really measuring is something else. That antibodies, which are a sign of immunity, they have to resort to looking for antibodies. Unless what they're really measuring is something else. I've just been infected with HIV. 
HIV. They have to resort to looking for antibodies. That psychological terror. That antibodies, which are a sign of immunity, Unless what they're really measuring is something else. The public is confused about the subject of HIV testing. They have to resort to looking for antibodies. That's psychological terror. Unless what they're really measuring is something else. The HIV antibody test is a very bad test. I don't recommend people ever getting tested.